Hi everyone, I recently got into pedal building and I've ordered three different pedal kits from musikding.de. We put the link down in the description. And in this video, Martin will ask me a bunch of questions about my experiences. <laughs> What I'm holding here in my hand is the Electra. It is a overdrive slash distortion pedal. It's a tweed style and it's very simplistic. It only has the volume knob. And this is the second pedal I've built. I just finished it uh, a couple of days ago. So yeah, everything is still very fresh, uh, all the experiences. And before that I assembled a reverb pedal, also a pedal kit from Musikding, which was a little bit more challenging, but yeah, let's talk specifically about this pedal in this video, or yeah, general the experiences with the uh, with the pedal kits, kits from from music thing. Yeah, before you start this, have you had any experience with soldering? Very little, to be honest. Um, maybe you have seen our uh, video about the Gibson Les Paul, where we uh, made it or where we changed the split coil sound. That was the first time I actually soldered something. I didn't have a solder station back then, and that was two or three months ago, so not that yes, long ago. Not, not too long ago. Not yeah. too long ago. That was my first time soldering. After that I built a volume uh, pedal, master volume pedal, which is very simple and just it's just basically just a volume pot and a bunch of cables. And that pedal was pretty much my entry into the soldering world. I didn't have any formal education like you had at school. Yep. I'm not really familiar with electronics and reading schematics and stuff like that. That's usually your job. <laughs> you also had to buy quite a few tools to start pedal building. So what were the essential things that you bought for yourself? What you look back and think, yeah, maybe I don't need this tool that I've bought or mm -hmm. uh, something that I'm really glad that I'm having now. Yeah, the most important is definitely the soldering station, which also has alligator clips to hold things. Um, that was a big help. The station itself also works fine. I was struggling a little bit with the solder tips. So yeah, just get a good station with good solder tips. Otherwise it can be quite a hassle while, while soldering a pedal. Um, I bought a wire stripper, which is not a must because you can also use a box cutter just to strip the cables, yeah. a little knife, something like that. Yeah, for, for uh, removing the insulation, I'm mm -hmm. using a knife yeah. for myself, so yeah. That's not a must. And other than that, it's just some basic tools you usually have around I would say if you have a toolbox like wrenches I also needed my Ibanez multi-tool just for for the screws you can use any screwdriver for that obviously yeah I also used a little fan which I already had but it's just to get all the fumes away mm -hmm. and not breathe them in uh, and what you also need is a good light we I use the softbox we use for filming just to have a good light on the table that's also a must uh, but it's not specifically a tool I bought for the pedal building, but that's just something you should have. I've uh, seen uh, Andy, the guitar geek, mm -hmm. using some magnifying glasses for when he built the kits from okay. uh, Stumac. Yeah. You didn't have the need for that? No, not really. Didn't feel the need no, for um, With the light, everything was pretty, pretty good uh, and, and visible to me, so that, that was no problem. The thing is the pedal kits from Music Ding, they label all the parts, so it's really easy to identify them. What I needed a lot were the tweezers that came with the solder station, just to yeah. the, the place wires, the parts, place the, the parts, wire. the wires and stuff mm -hmm. like that. The tweezers were important and, and a, a huge help. And uh, in case there was too much solder, the solder sucker. Yeah. That's also an, an essential tool in my opinion. Especially in the beginning, because uh, I guess with the first few solder points you didn't really have the control of how much solder you place on it and yeah not always and i was i was struggling the most with the solder tips because uh, they weren't transferring the heat always the, the yeah. way i needed it and that was a little bit annoying so let's get a little bit more into the kit um what manuals came with it or what manuals did you have for it Okay, the kit is like you get the PCB board, 
you get all the essential parts like resistors, capacitors and, and uh, input jacks, the foot switch, the LED, the pot, you get all that in the bag. You need to buy the enclosure separately okay. and the knob as well. So okay. this pedal, I think the, 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 the kit, just the inside, yeah. was around 17 euro. The enclosure was about 10 euro and the knob 75 cents, something like that. And with shipping, this pedal cost me a little bit over 30 euro in total. Just, okay. just the material. And they don't ship it with um, any manuals. I, I can just show you the kit I haven't assembled yet. It's basically different bags like this. And for the... For some parts it's protected and for some you have like little uh, descriptions on here. Do they sort the parts in these bags for a specific reason? So you have probably maybe for one PCB board all the parts in one of those bags and for the next if you have several PCB boards. It, it was like all in one bag for okay. this pedal including all the wires. Came like this for both pedals and then the enclosure separately and the knob as well. So this is for a boost pedal I also want to build pretty soon. Uh, in terms of manuals you get all the documents you need on the Musikding website. They have it in German and in English. Uh, in German they also have like a manual instruction for beginners uh, which, is, which is rather nice and was helpful for me. Uh, they don't have it in English but the three essential documents they also have in English is the parts list. Um, that's important to check all the parts if everything's here and in case something is missing you can contact them and they will send you the missing part. So yeah, the parts list, the wire plan and a basic instruction what the big steps are. Like they recommend to put the jacks uh, inside the enclosure first and the DC in and the foot switch then start soldering the PCB board, start with the smaller parts then go to the bigger parts and yeah, guide you through that. And my approach was I checked all the parts and everything was here and then I knew which, wa uh, which one should go to which section of the PCB board because of the wiring plan. Because it then said this resistor goes in this spot R3 for example. And then I placed it, put some uh, masking tape on, turned it around and then I soldered all the joints. Yeah, it's a little bit like drawing by numbers <laughs> with soldering. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, did you face any problems with this kit? Except for the soldering tips. Yeah, that's, that's the, the tool problem, that's not the, 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 the pedal's fault. This one specifically, they, they advertise it on the website as being very beginner friendly because it only has a few parts. So this is really nice to start out. and. Since it was my second pedal, I didn't have any issues. And with the reverb pedal I built before, I didn't have any issues with that one either. And it worked right away, which surprised me a little bit because I initially planned to film the whole process, but I was pretty sure I fried something while at it. And <laughs> I was surprised <laughs> that it uh, all worked out. It's just you need really to focus on the plan, check all the parts, really make sure everything is in the right spot, check every connection. And I wasn't in a hurry, I took my time and therefore both pedal worked fine. And yeah, even for a noob like me, so no yeah, so, really issues. So on a scale from 1 to 10, how much would you recommend it to a beginner? Because you are certainly more qualified to judge this than I would be with a lot of soldering experience. If I go at it, I say, well, it's easy, but yeah. This one was definitely easy. And I have to add, I got some soldering tips from Martin. We have a shorts about that as well uh, with some tips, but I asked you before yeah. uh, just to get some tips. And yeah, I wanted to get a little bit more in-depth knowledge of the different parts, what they stand for and if there's anything I should pay attention to because some parts are uh, can be damaged if yeah. they are exposed <coughs> to a lot of heat. Uh, the, the, which parts are that? Not resistors? The... You can also fry resistors if you if you're at it enough, okay. but that's a little bit harder. But 
Yeah, for example, the semiconductors, diodes, mm -hmm. transistors, uh, chips, and so on. Yeah, uh, and ICs. And that's yeah. also a point worth mentioning. For the um, sensitive parts, let's call it that, they have a socket. Yeah. And you can but solder that on the PCB board and then you can put it right on top. Lucas, you showed me before and I was really surprised. They even had it for a simple transistor, which, yeah you would normally solder straight into the PCB board. You can do this if you want, uh, but they have a socket where you can solder it. Then you mm -hmm. have, just have to cut the feet a little bit of yep. that transistor and place it in the socket and you're not getting uh, in the way of it and you're not endangering the part. Yeah, that's right. Now that you mention it, the wire cutter is a very important tool I forgot to mention before. But since I included a lot of pictures, you probably saw it already. That's really essential because yeah, the legs are way too long and you need to cut them. So Yeah, and in terms of difficulty, if we say 10 is the most beginner friendly and 1 is advanced or for expert pedal builders, I would say this one was probably a 9. Or maybe even a 10. I'm not sure if there are any simpler, more easier or more simplistic pedals like this one with one knob and only a few parts. You didn't even fill out the PCB board completely. Yeah. There were some spaces left. This was really not that difficult and it's a great starting point if you want to want to start pedal building. The boost I showed before is a little bit more uh, complicated as well as the reverb. It just has more parts but it just takes a little bit more time and a little bit more patience then. Exactly. But on the website, on Musikding website, they, when the pedal is beginner friendly, they say it on their web page. And all of them, uh, those three pedal kits I bought, they are beginner friendly. So they were probably all seven, eight or nine okay. around that. And yeah, not that challenging. How much time did it take you? I would say all in all, with everything tightened and working uh, as it should be, half a day so it was really not fast that was with all the, the the complications with the soldering tape i had to remove that quite mm. frequently because i just get, didn't get the heat to yeah melt the solder uh, and and get it on so the soldering itself is not that time consuming um but yeah just preparing everything the workstation get all the tools and then to assemble it everything yeah maybe three hours and it's three, also not hours. the pcb board's fault no so no no i wouldn't one, say so that one had good contacts yeah exactly that, that accepted the uh, the solder well once the heat was transferred it's hard to say how long it took exactly because i took a break yeah and and didn't do it in one sitting well with little knowledge and including preparation time and cleaning everything up i would say half a day yeah. But it's just getting messy with stripping all that and the solder everywhere. The cleaning up also takes a lot of time and the preparing. So yeah. I would say half a day for one pedal, which is probably really slow, but I wasn't yeah. in a hurry. <laughs> it's always good to take your time, especially when you're beginning with something like this. Mm -hmm. And yeah. I'm just, just happy that they both work. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm the first try. Yeah. I mean... And did they have in that manual or somewhere uh, some suggested mods? I have seen a few pedal kits on there where they had like use this and this and you get more uh, more gain out of it uh, from this control. On Musik Ding? On Musik Ding, on a few pedals that I was looking at. Uh, this one didn't have this, it was just... No, it great. was just... Um how to assemble it and the, the wiring plan and that's it. No mods, no spare parts to like go this route or this route. But they have, I don't know how many PCB boards or pedal kits they have on their website. Yeah, there are plenty. Really a lot. And I know there is one, you can either build it like a clone or a king of tone, right? Yes. That's the, may, might be one you're referring to with different mods. Yes, I think that was, that was, that was the one mm -hmm. because Krena was, was asking for something like right. this, I think. And you can either make it one or the other way. Mm -hmm. And yeah, but for these not, these were really kits, uh, you can find them uh, uh, with, the, with the name Musik Ding and not any other brand or maker. I think this was my last question because, yeah, 
I can't find anything anymore in my head. <laughs> what I would ask you of it, it seems to be a really good pedal for a beginner. And, yep. uh, yeah, yeah. I, I hope the pictures I took during the, the process and documenting all the tools also helped you if you want to get into pedal building. And with that, let's hear this thing. And yes, yeah. Tschüss. See ya. Thank you.